It is Wednesday, August 12th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorges Dam update. We have four pieces of information to cover today, including China activates emergency response for Yellow River floods. Next, courtesy of the South China Morning Post, Xi Jinping targets shocking food waste as China battles floods and pandemic supply problems. Next, courtesy of Taiwan News, Tropical Storm Mikala brings rain to Taiwan, strikes China. And last but not least, courtesy of express.co.uk, China bubonic plague spreads, Beijing orders second lockdown. We also have some images of projected rain totals for parts of China and some new footage playing in the background of today's video. Let's hop into it. And a brief caveat before today's video. While researching for these reports, I come across information from various sources. It doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with this information if I decide to include it. I just like to compile it so you can decide for yourself. Moving on. And a quick update on the status of the water level at the dam before we get started. The current water level at the Three Gorges Dam is listed at 156.38 meters. The current inflow sits at 24,000 cubic meters per second, and the current outflow is listed at 34,600 cubic meters per second. It is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. And our first article of the day comes courtesy of Global Times. China activates emergency response for Yellow River floods. China's Ministry of Water Resources on Tuesday initiated a level 4 response for floods, the lowest of the four-tier system in the upper reaches of the Yellow River, the country's second longest river. According to the Yellow River Conservation Commission of the Ministry, a flood peak was seen at Tangnahe Hydrologic Station in the upper reaches at 7.06 a.m. on Tuesday. With the flow of water per second reaching 2,500 cubic meters, it was the river's fourth flood of this year, the commission said. The commission ordered relevant departments to strengthen inspections of embankments and evacuation works and called on all reservoir management departments to comply with flood control instructions to ensure the safety of people's lives. And our next article comes courtesy of the South China Morning Post. Xi Jinping targets shocking food waste as China battles floods and pandemic supply problems. China's president has called on the country to stop wasting food. With floods affecting the country's traditional rice production areas and the pandemic disrupting food supply chains, experts said curbing food waste will help improve food security and strengthen the country's ability to cope with declining imports. Since early June, torrential rains have ravaged large tracts of farmland in South China, the country's major rice growing centers. According to state news agency Xinhua, President Xi Jinping said China's food waste problem was shocking and distressing, and despite several years of bumper harvest, the country needed to maintain a sense of crisis about food security. He also stressed the need to step up oversight in the area and establish a long-term mechanism to stop food waste. In addition, he called for better public awareness and the promotion of a social environment where waste is shameful and thriftiness is applaudable. The Xinhua report, published on Tuesday, also underlined public resentment of citizens who indulged in such wasteful habits. Since last year, she and other top leaders have repeatedly stressed the importance of food security and assured the public that the nation is producing enough food to feed its 1.4 billion people. According to a joint report released by the WWF and Chinese Academy of Sciences in 2018, Restaurants and canteens in China wasted an estimated 18 million tons of food a year. That's about 3% of the country's total food production. The report said the waste was enough to feed up to 50 million people. Zhang Hongsu, a research fellow with Singapore's School of International Studies, said that the latest call by Xi represented another step by Beijing to improve China's food security and to bolster its food power amid a prolonged struggle with the United States. Besides increasing investment in agricultural projects overseas, diversifying imports, and building up China's agricultural business around the world, Reducing food waste also means less reliance on imports and enhancing China's food power, Zhang said. He said he was not too concerned about the floods and other natural disasters impact on China's food supply, especially grain production. The flooding has caused lots of damage for sure, but compared with previous years, the affected area this year is not substantially higher, he said. 
He also added that low prices were the main reason for discouraging farmers from planting more grain. The nation has kicked in subsidies for grain farmers, but grain producers are still making less money than those who grow more expensive products. China will have to resolve this issue to safeguard its food production, Zhang said. Hu Xindao, an independent economist based in Beijing, said China needed to prepare for a worst-case scenario in its struggle with the U.S. and to achieve full self-reliance in food production. The official data suggests that China imports about 20% of its food supply, but some academics estimate that the actual volume may be as high as 30%. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. And our next article comes courtesy of Taiwan News. Tropical Storm Makala brings rain to Taiwan, strikes China. China braces for more flooding as Tropical Storm Mikala makes landfall in Fuyan. The periphery of Tropical Storm Mikala, the sixth tropical storm of the year, will bring rain to Taiwan today, while China is bracing for more flooding as the storm makes landfall in the communist country. At 8 a.m. this morning, the center of Mikala was 100 kilometers west of Kinmen, moving north at a speed of 29 kilometers per hour. According to the Central Weather Bureau, it has a radius of 120 kilometers and is packing maximum sustained winds of 82.8 kilometers per hour, with wind gusts of up to 108 kilometers per hour. According to the CWB, the tropical storm made landfall on the coast of Fuyan at 7 a.m. this morning and continued to move northwards. The China Meteorological Administration has issued a level 3 emergency response for the storm while its National Meteorological Center issued a blue warning for the typhoon and rainstorms. China's central government has ordered weather bureaus in Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, Shanxi, Liaoning, Fuyan, Henan, Sichuan, and Gansu, and other provinces that may be affected to start or adjust the corresponding emergency response levels in response to conditions on the ground. In preparation for Mikala's arrival in Fuyan, China's National Flood Control and Drought Relief Headquarters has launched its emergency response for flooding to Level 4 and sent personnel to Fuyan for flood defense work. And our last article of the day is courtesy of Express.co.uk. China bubonic plague spreads, Beijing orders second lockdown. Panic has swept across China's Inner Mongolia province after a second bubonic plague lockdown was enforced, two days after the first as whole villages are sealed off. Sadly, a man died in the region from multiple organ failure after contracting the deadly disease that caused the Black Death. Authorities tracked the man's movements back to his village and sealed it off. This is the second village to be placed in quarantine within the past few weeks. Authorities in Bayanawar said the place of residence of the deceased is locked down, and a comprehensive epidemiological investigation is being carried out. The statement added, currently there is a risk of the human plague spreading in our city. Last Thursday, another person died from the bubonic plague. This was in the adjacent city of Baotou. Health officials in this city announced a villager there had died of circulatory system failure due to infection with bubonic plague. Health officials then rushed to seal off the village where the deceased person had first come into contact with the disease. The reason for such extreme measures is because the bubonic plague is a highly infectious and often fatal disease. The World Health Organization said bubonic plague has a case fatality ratio of 30% to 100% if left untreated. The last major outbreak of the bubonic plague was in China in the late 1800s. It was called the Third Plague Pandemic and it caused the death of 12 million people. During this plague that affected mostly India and China at the end of the 19th century, French researchers were able to isolate the bacteria that causes the bubonic plague and also discovered how rodents are a vector for the disease to spread. And our last piece of information for today is a series of photos that shows the 3, 5, and 10 day expected rain accumulation totals for Shangdu.
and I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content.